Hallelujah. And good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rejoice and be glad about it. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord on today. For he is good, he is merciful, he is kind, he is all-knowing. God, I bless your name. He is all-seeing, mighty, all the works, hallelujah, of his hands. Good morning, Grace, good to see you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. This verse was on my mind this morning, so I just want to read it as we are coming on in the room on today. Hallelujah. Psalms 27 and 4, one thing that I desire of the Lord, the thing that I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord all my days. God, I bless your name. Delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will conceal me there when trouble comes. He will hide me in his sanctuary. God, I bless your name. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high. God, I bless your name. Above my enemies who surround me at his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices of shouts of joy, singing praises. Hey, glory. Singing and praising the Lord with music. God, I bless your name. Hallelujah. 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 He's still God. Hey, glory. God, I bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. And he still got power. Hey, glory. God, I bless your name. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory. God, I bless your name. He is still God. He is still Elohim. He is still El Shaddai. He is still Emmanuel, the God who sits high and the God who looks low. God, I bless your name. Hallelujah. Good morning, Alicia. Hallelujah. He glory and he reigns. He, my God. Hallelujah. Glory. God, I bless your name. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Good morning, Calvin. Good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah, that just blesses me. He still reigns. That's what I love. Hallelujah. No matter the situation and no matter the circumstance, God, I bless your name. Good morning, Misty. Hallelujah. Good morning, Takaya. Good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to say good morning to Jessica and good morning to Danica. Those are two of the newest members of the Makeover Ministry family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Come on. The Lord is a good God. He's a good God. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh holy God. You still reign. You still reign. You still reign. And you still have power. That's what I love about the Lord. Hallelujah. No matter the situation or the circumstance. Woo. He's everything. He is everything. God, I bless your name. Hallelujah. Good morning, Miss Celeste. Good to see you, woman of God. Every time I hear you, get ready to say your name because you've been on my mind a little bit here lately. I just keep hearing the Lord say, mighty woman of God. Mighty woman of God. Hallelujah. Mighty woman of God. Hallelujah. Good morning, Jasmine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Good morning, Orlando, Florida in the building. Hallelujah. Good morning, Sherry. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. We touch and agree with um, someone asking for prayer for their daughter to have brain, uh, brain surgery. Okay. We ask that the Lord be in the operating room, for he is the great physician. We ask that the Lord not only be in the operating room, but that he does a miracle while he's there. God, I bless your name. I've seen the Lord... Um, 
I've seen the Lord do many miracles and when by the time the doctor go in to do the thing. Okay. Okay. Um, by the time the doctor go in to do the thing that they go in to do, my God, they say we don't even have to do the surgery. We don't understand what has happened here. Hey, glory. So we just ask that even, she, okay, you said she's in a coma now. Even while she is resting, we're going to say that she is resting. We ask that the Lord speak to her, oh God. Give her a glory encounter. May his spirit rest, rule, and abide in that room. Lord, we ask that you dispatch angels on today, God. Make yourself known, for your name is famous. Your name is great, oh God. When you do miracles, you do miracles so great, there is nothing that is impossible for God. It seems big to us, but it is small to you, oh God. Lord, we leave it all in your hands. Good morning, Mary. We leave it all in your hands, God. I bless your name. Thank you, God. I encourage you to leave praise and worship music playing in her hospital room around the clock. No matter if it's Pandora, YouTube, no matter if you're singing. My God, I believe in creating an atmosphere. God, I bless your name for a miracle. My God, and let's the, let's the Lord know you're welcome in this place. Hey, glory. We're not going to let the whole room be filled with worry and doubt and frustration. And we don't know, hey, God, because we know. Hey, glory. We know who God is and we know that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. God, I bless your name above what we can think, ask, or imagine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where two or three are gathered, there he shall also be in the midst. So we thank him for his presence on today, God. We thank him for his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yee, glory. Hallelujah. He is good. My God. Hallelujah. Glory. Yee. He is our shelter. My God, come on. There is no lack in God. There is no lack in God. God, I bless your name. There is no lack in God. Good morning, mommy. Good to see you this morning. There is no lack. My God, there is nothing too hard. There is nothing impossible for the living God. Yee, glory. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Hmm. Thank you, God. Ooh, good morning, Julia. It's good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. Listen, there is a word from the Lord on today. There is a word from the Lord on today. God, I bless your name. Lord, we ask that you come into this place. Oh, to, oh God. We ask that you have your way this morning in each heart, each mind, God. We ask that you allow the word to be clear and concise. Send the word of deliverance. Somebody's been wondering why their children have not come in. God, I bless your name. They have been wondering, my God, why their children are still teeter-tottering, why their children can't get their feet on solid ground. God, I bless your name. Lord, we thank you for the word on today, God. We ask that you hide it in our hearts so that we don't sin against you. May we meditate on it day and night and may we take action. For well, faith without works is dead. Lord, we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, God. You're everything to me. Is he truly your everything? Don't just say it. We say it. We say it. It sounds real good. My God. Is he truly your everything? When he's your everything, there is no area of your life that you withhold from him. My God, there is no area, my God, of your life that you withhold from him. God, I bless your name. Lord, if you touch my finances, I'll still bless you. My God, I'm not even talking about it in a good way. God, if I lose my house, I'll still bless you. If I lose my child, I'll still bless you. My God, you have to get into a place where he is truly your everything. That is how you provoke the hand of God. Hey, glory. Because sometimes taking a stand for Christ, you're going to lose those close to you for a season. God, I bless your name. But let God be God. Let God be God. Every man be alive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. You're everything to me. Your bread when I'm hungry. Hey, hey, oh God, oh God, he is, hallelujah, my God. Your water when I'm thirsty, my God. 
Yay, glory. See, that's good. Somebody said, I have no choice but to trust them. Yay, glory, and that's good. But we got to, as we grow up, my God. See, at first we get in those. That's how I learned to trust God because I didn't have no choice. My back was up against the wall. Now I willingly trust them. Yeah, glory. Because a lot of times we've learned to let God be the last result. We done tried everything else. My God. But as you keep growing in God, let him be the first choice. My God, put all your eggs in the basket at first. God, I bless your name. Yeah, glory. Thank you, Jesus. God, I bless your name. Thank you, God. Put all your eggs in one basket. God, I bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your sting? He. Oh, death, where is your sting? My God. My God. My God. Oh, death, where is your sting? He. Mm. Yee, listen, I love God. Oh, that's where you think meaning I'm not with whatever I lose. It don't hurt me like it used to hurt me. My God, because I just believe that God is able. My God, I believe that he's working this thing together for my good. No matter what he takes. My God, he's always going to replace it with something better or he's going to go another way. But either way, it's going to work out for my good and for his glory. We're so we're too afraid to lose people of God. We can't gain Christ because we're too afraid to lose. We're too afraid to lose friendships. We're too afraid to lose people. We're afraid to lose godly connection. Okay, let's just say you you got your own business. Let's just say the Lord allows a contract to be set up and you get ready to make a hundred thousand dollars, but the person standing before you that you gotta sign the contract, the Lord gives you a word for them. And you know that they're not going to hurt, want to hurt it. And it could jeopardize the money that you are getting ready to make. Do you still deliver the word? <laughs> he really, I mean, is he really your everything? When the doctors say that there is nothing else, <laughs> glory, that we can do, do you still have hope or are you hopeless? Because our hope is in Christ Jesus. So that ain't even, baby, that's just, a, that, so, okay, you can't do nothing. You're limited. I serve a God who is unlimited. I serve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above more than we can think, ask, or imagine. My God, I don't know how he's going to do it, but I'm counting on God. Counting on God. Thank you, Lord. I'm counting on the Lord, God Almighty, for he has never failed me yet. He has never lost a battle. Yee, glory, his train fills the temple. I'm going to keep counting on the Lord. I'm going to go with God. He glory. I don't know how. He. But I know he's able. Hallelujah. He glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, I bless your name. Hallelujah. He. Let's hop into this word on today, y'all. Man. This conversation came about, I got a phone call yesterday after uh, Makeover Ministry about um, about Little Nas X. The, I don't really watch the news and I don't really get into a lot of stuff. Um, so sometimes things pass me over. And so I seen kind of some of the little stuff he had going on, but I wasn't really, it didn't really. And so um, when my friend called me and she was talking about, she said, man, it's just hurting my heart. And so I had to get quiet and I had to say, okay, Lord, how are we losing so many of our young people? How are we losing so many of our young people? Uh, so many, we have so many of our young people that don't want to serve God. They don't want to love God. They don't want to, you know, that what, how are we losing so many of our young people to drugs and to homosexuality and to promiscuity and to teen pregnancy and how are we losing so many of our young people to mental illness and they're cutting themselves and they are depressed and how are we losing so many they are drug addicted my god they're homeless how are we losing so many of our young people our word today is we are sacrificing the children 
we're sacrificing the children. And as much as we want to blame shift, we ain't going to do like Adam did in the garden. Nope, it didn't, it didn't even start with the media and the music. We're going to take it on back. We're going to take it on back. Yeah, that now that definitely has something to do with it. Uh, we we don't even have we don't let me let me I'm not I'm not gonna say that we don't have as many praying grandmothers. Not only do we not have as many praying grand we don't have many gr praying grandmothers with clean hands. Hey, my God, we might got praying grandmothers, but their hands ain't clean. Hey, we might got pray they might be at church praying. They might have a little oil. They might they might be doing. I'm not saying all of them because I believe it's a couple of them that are still oily. My God, but there are a couple that we got a, a great deal of praying grandmothers that still are fornicating. We got a great deal of praying grandmothers that are still nasty and they are still rude and they are still uh, 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 rebellious to God and they ain't fully submitted to God. And one day they drinking behind closed doors and they still laying up with Mr. Jones. They got a thing going on. Come on. They dressing inappropriate. My God, come on. They cussing at work. So yeah, we got some praying grandmothers. And some praying grandfathers, but we got to have praying grandmothers and praying grandfathers with clean hands. They said, I love my children so much that I am willing to keep my hands clean. To deny the flesh. That's how we, that's how the oil is produced. That's that crushing. Hey, nevertheless, we got to have grandmothers with nevertheless. Oh, I still know how to do it. Ye glory. I still want to do it. My God, but never the less. God, I bless your name. We, we, we need grandmothers that will stand up and say, no, I love you, but you're wrong. You're wrong. My, but, but we're too afraid that they're not going to let us see the grandkids. <laughs> Baby, listen, we have to get to a place where God is the highest authority. We are sacrificing the children. Hallelujah. Even if I can't see them, baby, my prayer life stretches. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Let's jump right in the word on today, people of God. Let's go to Exodus 13. Exodus 13. As much as we want to blame a lot of things on a lot of other people, we have more to do with it than we want to admit, than we want to acknowledge Someone said, pray for me that my son gets his life together. Well, I want you to stay in the room and make sure that there's no, no blood on your hands. Because I had to realize that as much as I wanted my kids to do some things, I, I had blood on my hands. So I wanted them to get in line, but it was some areas that I was not in line. And see that oil, it runs down. Hey, my God. So when a parent is in rebellion to God, do not expect the children to be in alignment and listening to your voice. Are you obeying God daily, every single day? You want the child to obey you every single day and do what is right and do what is pleasing and do what is good and do what is holy. Are you doing what is right? Are you doing what is holy? Are you doing what is pleasing every day? Hey. Help us, Holy Ghost. No condemnation, just clarity. Just help. We have to understand. We got to properly diagnose. It's easy to say, yeah, just, you know, a child act right. No, let's get this. We got to get some structure back in order. Exodus 13 and 15 says, Pharaoh stubbornly refused hmm, to let us go. So the Lord killed all the firstborn males throughout the land of Egypt, both people and animals because of Pharaoh's rebellion to God because of Pharaoh's stubbornness my God now children now the children have lost their life because Pharaoh was being stubborn and many people they think that you know I got a Moses anointing but you acting more like Pharaoh Here glory in church you're lifting your hands and saying god i bless you you're good you're amazing you're wonderful and all these things and yes god i'll serve you and i'll do whatever you for your glory saying and for your glory i'll do anything but then when we get home hey my god and then when it's time to put your hand to the plow my god we're acting more like pharaoh God, if you do this for me, I'm going to do it. God, I thank you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to do all these things, but we're acting more like Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, yeah, I'm going to let your people go. But as soon as Mo 
nose is turned and went the other way. My God. Pharaoh was right back to doing the same thing he used to do. Hey, don't be Pharaoh claiming to be Moses. You're only deceiving yourself. Because see, God sees how and he knows how and he knows the assignment that he has given you. He knows what he has placed in you, my God. And some of us are sacrificing our children because we will not obey God fully. We will not submit to God fully. God, I bless your name. And so we are sacrificing our children, our stubbornness. Hey, my God. You know God has called you to preach. You know he's called you to sing. You know he's called you to prophesy. My God, come on. Help us, Holy Ghost. Hey, glory. He has called you to a certain thing. But if you're not doing your thing, some of us are sacrificing our children because it's your gift. My God, it's your talents. It's the anointing that destroys yokes. It's the anointing. It's not how many times you whoop them. My God, come on. It's not how many times you cuss at them. Come on. It's not how many times you take their game system. The anointing destroys yokes. Check your house. Before you keep on getting on the kids, check your house. Am I being fully obedient and fully submissive to God? While I'm getting upset because they ain't being submissive to me. Oh, we're going deep today, y'all. We're going in. God, I bless your name. Pharaoh's stubbornness caused death upon many children. Okay, God has put a youth ministry in your belly. How do I know? Because I was a troubled youth. That's how you know. If you want to know, if you was a youth, whatever your youth things was, it's some youth ministry in you because you was a youth and you made it through. My God, if you're no longer doing what you used to do, it's some youth ministry in you and it's children that need to hear your story. It's children that need you to take them under their wing. My God, come on. Maybe you're a stay-at-home mom and the lady next door, she goes to work and and you know, you know that the lady next door is at work till six o'clock. You know she got kids. Why don't you reach out and say, you know, I see your kids come home. She sees you. She can trust you. Y'all talk all the time. Maybe I, your kids can come over here. Let, we got to cover our children. We have to stop being so selfish. See, I'm fully convinced. I am fully persuaded. There's no shadow of a doubt in my mind. You won't have time for sin. Because you'll be too busy in your assignment. People that are struck, stuck sinning on, they just struggling, I'm struggling, I'm struggling, I'm struggling. It's because you're, you're not in your assignment. You don't have time, my God. You don't have time to sin when you are fully committed because you still got your own personal life. You got your family. You got your God assignment. You got your job. Come on. You got your own time. You got to spend with the Lord. You got so many things going on. If you got a lot of free time, you, somewhere you're, you're off. Somewhere. Somewhere you're off. S somewhere you are off. What things have you done well in your life? That is a part of your God assignment. There are children in your neighborhood that need what you're bringing. And you, it's not it's not enough to be like, they mama just, they don't make they, no sense. They mama just a hot mess. They daddy just a hot mess. Well, what are you doing? Because you they may not be developed in that area. Listen, my favorite, I started out teaching Sunday school and I had three kids at first and who do have mercy? One of them, his name was John, bless God. John used to wear me down. John would be writing on my shoes. He'd be writing on the wall. I'm still trying to teach the Sunday school. Oh God. But, but it, it, it built something in me. It built endurance and the whole church grew, not because I'm so great, but because the Lord put it in my heart to start, to start a Sunday school, the whole Sunday school, it grew from having maybe two or three people to all the kids started wanting to come. I looked up and I went from three kids. Then I looked up and it was 15 kids. Then it was about 20 kids. Come on. God has given us gifts. You don't have to know everything to be in your God assignment. Pharaoh's stubbornness caused the death of many children. And you know what's so beautiful about helping children? Kids don't forget. Kids do not Forget what you have done to, done for them. My my stepdaughter from my first marriage, uh, we had not talked in many, many, many years. About 12, maybe 15 years, and it was her, no, I'll say about, about 10, maybe about 10 years. And her 21st birthday had came up. And I, um, 
um, I called her and I was like, hey, come and, you know, I got finally got in touch with her. I said, come and spend the week with me down in Florida. I was living in Florida. She came and she said, she said, you know what? She said, Mama J, you will always be my stepmama. She said, because you was good. To, you was never, you always treated me good. You always treat, no matter what, and, and all kind of stuff was going on in our house. All kind of stuff was acting crazy. My God, but I didn't take it out on the child, and I left a thumbprint on her life. Now, I, it left a door of influence. I can always speak a word, and she might not like it, but she can testify that I have treated her kindly. You create a taste in people's mouth. Come on. You create a taste in people's mouth. You wonder why your kids, come on, we got parents that have been gone for 15 years and then you come back and you mad because the child don't respect you. You didn't respect yourself when you left. Be patient. Be humble. You gotta, they have to get through years of pain, years of disappointment, years of letdown. You sacrificed your child. You didn't have the endurance to stay. You didn't have the endurance to stay faithful. You didn't have the endurance to stay committed. You didn't have the endurance to crucify that flesh. You didn't have the endurance, my God, to say, no, I'm not going to live that way because I'm not going to give my children over to the devil by the way that I live. There's a message that I preached on my YouTube channel called The Gatekeeper. I, I encourage you to check it out. It'll bless you. Let's go to Psalms. Hey. We have sacrificed the children. We have sacrificed the children. Let's go to Psalm 68. God, I bless your name. Psalm 68. Hallelujah. Father to Psalm 68, and then we're going to start at verse 5. Father to the fatherless, defender of widows. This is God whose dwelling place is holy. God places the lonely in families. He sets the prisoners free and gives them joy. Come on. If we are supposed to be the children of God, we have to have attributes like God. God, I bless your name. We have to look like his children. My God, don't your child look like you? Well, my child, I got two. One look like me, one don't. My God. But your child should look like you. God, I bless your name. So we have to step in. My God, if, the, if there are fatherless children, this is why... This is why you have to be delivered from lust, people of God. This is a, I promise you, lust is so big because it is a stumbling block for so many people. If the Lord sends a man to minister to your son, but you're not delivered from lust, you're going to think he's for you. He's not for you. The Lord sent him for your son. My God, come on. And if the Lord sends a woman in your life, she may not be for your dating, for your marrying, but for the ministering uh, to your daughter. Hey, come on. Come on. We're, we think everything. Oh, he want me. Girl, he ain't, he ain't sent by God to minister to the brokenness in your son. We're so thirsty. We're so thirsty. Come on, people of God, we got to do better because our children are dying. Our children are being pushed by the wayside. Our children are put, our, our, our daughters are picking wrong men and our sons are picking wrong women because they have no example. I don't care how good of a bill payer that you are. You're not a good parent if you're not faithful to the, to the one you lay with to make that child. I don't care. I don't care if you have, if they have all the Jordans, I don't care because it has not taught them a proper foundation. I bless God for step parents that truly step in. I, I think, listen, my step daddy was so good to me to this step who? No, that's my daddy. I don't know that step who. He stepped in and was good and even went for some years and was on drugs, but he was still good. He was an excellent father to me. To the best of his ability of what he had to work with, he he never treated me different. He said, I got two girls. My God, come on. We have to get in this place. We have to get in this place, God, I bless your name, where we believe God, no matter what it looks like. 
When families break up, it leaves the door open to the enemy for our children. When five, because now one parent has to work too much. There's now both parents outside of the house. God, I bless your name. And so the child is doing whatever they want to do. They're staying up late. They don't have nobody to help them. Nobody's at the school games. This is why so many people are able to molest your children and molest our children when they go out into these youth groups. My God, because we have shown them no affection. My God, because we have shown them because we're too busy. Not because we don't want, but I got to pay the bills. And another thing, we just heard this morning, people of God. Another thing is we're living too much above our means. Come on. We're living too much above our means. And so that is why we have to work so much. My God. That is why we have to work so much because we're trying to support a lifestyle that means nothing. Yeah, you got a big house, but your child's in the room behind closed doors cutting themselves. How good is that big house now? Hey, my God. How good is the big house now while you at work, your son sneaking in girls in the back door and boys? My God, come on. How good is the big house now? Hey. Help us, Holy Ghost. Come on. We have to do better. And we don't have all day to do it. There's going to have to be some cold turkey changes that have to be made if we want our children to survive. We are sacrificing the children. We are collectively. I'm talking about the people of God. I'm talking about the people of God. Because the world is going to do what the world is going to do. But how you going to say you a child of God and you have no God assignment? My God, what kind of child of God are you? You're not ministering anywhere. You ain't ministering in the park. My God, you ain't ministering in the grocery store. There is not enough. There has to be enough. This is how I know when people are really in their work. Because there's so much word in you, it just starts to come out. Hey, glory. There's so much praise in you, my God, that it just starts to leak out. God, I bless your name. Hey. Mm. So true. So true. Help us, Holy Ghost. My God. Let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 18. This scripture was life changing for me in my life and my family, right? Let me, let me read this to you. Ezekiel. 18 and 2 says, why do you quote this proverb concerning the Lord of it, the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes. The parents have eaten sour grapes. All right. The parents have eaten sour grapes, but the children's mouths pucker at the taste. Hey, my God. The parents have, have created a taste bud in their child. See, kids don't know if food is good or not. Let, let's, I'm going to make it real simple, then we'll keep going. Children don't know if food is good or not. You give them their taste buds. It's not that diabetes and high blood pressure runs in families. It don't run in families. You can't convince me of it. It runs in recipes. It runs in lifestyles. My God, come on. When you first give your child that they, they first little bananas and all those little things that they eat, the baby food, it don't got fat back in it. Come on. It don't got hog moths in it. Come on in the room. Come on. Listen, we create, the, we teach them that butter has to go on things and this don't got no flavor in it. My God, come on. We create the taste buds. It's not that obesity runs in families. It's the recipes run in families. Hey. That's why you can eat your mama's cooking all your life and you think it's real good. Then you go somewhere else and you eat somebody else's cooking and you be like, mm, because that's just how mama has cooked. So my mama cooked real good. And then you taste, you be like, well, that don't taste that good to me. But you've been eating it all your life. So that's, that is your standard for good. <sighs> my God, help us Holy Ghost. And then the, the lifestyle habits, if the whole family just eat, I was in, I went to a Thanksgiving dinner one time with this family. They said, Ooh, we like to get fat, funky, full. I said, Oh, okay. If the whole family is just used to eating and then everybody just eat a whole, just honey, we eat four, five plates and then we just go and lay down and just, yee, 
could just lay like a pig in the mud. Come on. We're creating our taste buds. Now, let me help you. Let me tell you how this scripture helped me, okay? Mm. So, I remember riding in the car one day, and my son was like, uh, I had got out of the car, and he had turned on some music when I went in the store. And when I came back out, I was like, Bishop, I, come on. I don't want to hear that. And the Holy Ghost got me so good. This scripture right here. Oh, you created that taste bud. When you used to ride around in the car listening to T.I. Y'all in there. Hey, y'all in there. Y'all in there. Getting it. You got the sunroof out. You hollering and hopping to music that goes against God. And now you say sanctified and Holy Ghost feel. My God. But you created that taste bud in that child. Now you got to wait till it runs its course. You taught her how to dress whorish. Hey, my God, come on. We're teaching kids can't even be kids no more. Come on. We got little boys. We putting little we putting chains on them and putting bracelets on them. They still in pampers. We got little girls, little bitty girls. And we putting them in, putting weave on their ponytails. My God, they little bitty babies. My God, they put we putting belly tops on. You're teaching them to dress whorish. And now you mad. Hey, you mad. When they get older. Come on. I seen somebody had took their little baby. He couldn't even hold his head up. And they had put tattoos. Uh, the little tattoos. I mean all over his whole body. We're sacrificing the children. In the name of entertainment. It's just simple. No, it's planting a seed. Because if you let me do it when I was little. Because that show was my testimony. I don't know how. My mama used to. I don't know what was going on. But my mama used to let me dress inappropriate. I don't know. She just did. I didn't have no job. I used to wear cat suits. When I was in the uh, fifth grade and sixth grade, my teacher would be like, mm -mm. my teacher called me Miss Grony. She said, no, -uh, Miss Grony, you're not coming in here with all of that. Listen, she was on duty. Hey, glory, because my mama was just doing what my mama was doing. I don't know what she was doing at the time. But my teacher said, you can't come in here like that. She said, I'm the only one that wears lipstick in this classroom. I did not like that. But looking back, she was right. She was on duty. Hey. My God, you can catch the full message on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is called Makeover Ministry. It'll be called the, the uh, We Are Sacrificing the Children. She was on duty. My God. And so when I got older, I was like, you know, I mean, when I got 16, I was like, I've been dressing like this since I was 12. You let me dress like this when I was younger. Now, what's the problem? Come on. We let our kids talk back and cuss when they get little. We think it's cute because they cussing until they start cussing you out. We are sacrificing the children. Kids don't even know how to go outside and play no more because we keep putting electronics in their hands and now we're wondering why they are addicted and they can't do nothing without their phone. My God, my kids too. And, and they can't do nothing without their tablet. My God, come on. They have no social skills. They don't know how to look up and talk to you because all they know how to do is text message. We'll sacrifice the children. We, we've been the ruin of our own children. We're, and this is the one that, let me not get ahead of myself. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's go to Ezekiel 16. Ezekiel 16. God, I bless your name. And starting at verse 20, Ezekiel 16 and 20. Then you took your sons and daughters, the children you had bore to me. See, some of our kids, we, they, listen. Some of our kids were not even going to make it in this world. Some of our kids, you prayed and you fasted and you said, God, you know, they got this going on, but God, I'm believing you to bring them into the world. Come on. Some of our children were not, listen, my daughter, they, she wasn't even breathing when she was born. They didn't even know which way. Come on. She was born. Or the children that you bore to me, you came and said, God, touch my child, touch my womb. Shh. Then you took your sons and daughters, the children you had born to me, and sacrificed them to your gods. Wasn't your prostitution enough? Shh. 
must you also slaughter my children by sacrificing them to idols? Teaching children that they can't wear clothes unless it's a certain name brand. Oh, my baby only wear Gucci. My baby only wear Jordan. My baby only wear Fendi. My baby only wear... You're teaching, creating a taste bud in them. Baby, it's just cotton and clothes. They just done tricked you into spending more money. <laughs> My God. We're teaching our, we're sad. We don't think about it like this, but we're sacrificing our children to our gods, to the idols in our hearts, to the things that are important to us that are outside of God. Come on. When you, when you make it mandatory in your house, Okay, when you make it mandatory in your house that your child go to school, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and not only do they go to school, but they better act right when they get there or they're going to get in trouble. They better do their work while they're there. And if your school, your children wear uniforms, then they better wear their uniforms. But you tell them that church is mandatory. You have now taught them that education is more important than God. You have sacrificed them to the gods of this world. Shh. Yay. Now, that's crazy, but it's real. When you tell them that they have to go to school and pay attention, in school they can't be on their phones. So when you let them go to church in the presence of a holy God and be on their phones, you just taught them that God is not important and he does not require your full attention. I believe you should give a child a paper and a pencil when they come to church if they still haven't learned how to sit. But you have to teach them. When a child learns to sit still in the presence of God, they don't struggle as much as sitting still at school. And these kids understand way more than you think they understand. God, I bless your name. Thank you, Lord. This is another one. Now, so now let's get to the little Nas X subject. Just briefly, I don't give the devil a whole lot of uh, airplay. I'm just trying to help us understand what we need to understand. Broken homes have led to poverty. Another one is laziness has led to poverty. And poverty has created an appetite in our children that is now saying, whatever I got to do, 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 because we're broke, because we're poor, my God, because we're lazy, my God, welfare mentality, get up and go to work. Come on. If you know how to click online, you can do something with yourself. My God, I said it. I mean it. I'm going to stand on it. God, I bless your name. We would not have so much mental illness. People got up and go to work. Okay, I know you. Okay, yeah, I know you seeing blue dolphins. God, I bless your name. But while you're seeing them blue dolphins, take the trash to the back. Okay, it's all right. Come on. We don't even have time. <laughs> you won't have time to just sit around and let your mind go to the left and to the right because you have to figure out how to pay bills. Come on. I'm trying to help us on today. Poverty has forced our, that's why the rap game and the music industry and porn and strip clubs, because children don't want to keep being broke. <laughs> they don't want to keep, and I'm I'm not even talking, I'm not even saying that they have to have the best of everything, but y'all know what I'm saying. Some children have been raised way too poor, and so it creates an appetite in them. And not only poor in money, but some children have been raised so emotionally poor. That's why our daughters are out here having sex with people. That's why our sons are out here having sex with people, because they're emotionally poor. They have no one speaking over their life. That's why the gangs are so much thriving, because they have learned the, listen, we just read the word of God says, I place the lonely in families. The enemy does the same thing. He said, oh, okay, mama's at work all the time. Daddy's out shooting his shot, doing whatever he's doing. Come on. And so now I got a little boy that's sitting there. He's smart. I see he got a gift on him. My God, come on. And so now I'm just going to take him under my wing. And first I'm going to just start feeding him chicken and making sure he's good because I got a win over his affection and I got to win over his trust and it ain't going to take much because many of these children are so broken and they're so dropped and the parents are so selfish 
It ain't going to take much to win over our kids. Hmm. I pray this word is convicting somebody today. Because if you are if you are not handling your family correctly, starting with your husband or starting with your wife, my God, you're cheating, you're doing all this extra stuff, you're leaving the door open to your to the enemy for your children. So when they get caught up in whatever sin they get caught up in, if they get pregnant early, it's your fault. It's your fault. I know you saved today. <laughs> my God, but I'm talking about the things that we have done in front of them. You can't get mad. Because they're smoking weed. Now you are the one who let the smell of weed blow through the house. Now you mad because not only do they smoke weed, but now they too cold too. Come on. Because sin is never satisfied. But we just want sin to be contained. I mean, just smoke weed, baby. Weed is from the earth. These kids nowadays, it's going worse and worse because the enemy is trying to kill them. He's not trying to pacify them. So when you leave the door open... We have a whole show called 600 Pound Life. Why is that a TV show? We see nothing wrong with it. Let me help us some more. I mean, it's tight, but it's right this morning, y'all. We have made homosexuality comfortable in our homes. We've made it comfortable. We let Tyler Perry just come in. He's a man in a dress. I know it seemed like fun. It seemed entertaining. It started off good. We could laugh about it. It ain't funny when your son come home in a dress. We made homosexuality comfortable in our homes. We have not called sin, sin. Come on. And not only does, home, does, does uh, Tyler Perry, he, he mocks God. He mocks God, but those that are lukewarm Christians, they, they think it's funny to say hallelujah. No, that's mocking your God and you don't even know it. It's like being told jokes about you're the butt of the joke, but you don't even know it. Come on. We've sacrificed the children. We have made them think that the things of the world are better than the things of God. Another way. We have sacrificed our children is by not doing our God assignment. Because you'll always be broken than you're supposed to be. You'll always not have the influence that you're supposed to have. My God, you'll never reach where you're supposed to reach. My God, children will never see that there are benefits to serving God. Because when you don't do your God assignment, all they see is you come into the church, sit on the pew, put your money in the collection plate, grab your children and your purse and you leave right on back out. Or you bring your children and your Bible, come on, and you take your briefcase, my God, or whatever you're carrying, you bring your family to the sanctuary and then y'all leave. They have to see that serving God has benefits. You have to see that. Serving God has benefits. They won't see it until you do. I mean, up close and personal. They have to see you do your God assignment. What he preordained and predestined you to do. We all have a work to do. But we are the body of Christ. What part of your body can you cut off today and say, I don't need that? Is it your pinky toe? You don't need that. You cut your nose off. Cut the tip of your ear off. Come on. If you cut anything on your body, it's going to bleed. You are. Are you a part of the body of Christ or not? Then you have an assignment. Not to sit still. So, oh, I'm just, you know, I, I'm going to use my body today, but I'm going to let my foot sit still and don't do nothing with that. Come on. We need your gift. Children are dying. Our children are selling their souls. Hmm. Everything that your struggles are, that's how you know what your God assignment is. Everything that your struggles are. And another way you know is the people that God brings into your life. The people that God brings into your life. But our first, and many people, let, let me help us. I'm glad you said that. Thank you for putting that up there. I'm glad you said that. Because many people will say, I don't know what my God assignment is. The first, the first, first God assignment that we all have. It's found in 1 Thessalonians 4. It is to live holy. My God, for your life to be sanitized. 
my God, because he don't want you up there with dirty hands. God, I bless your name. For your life to be clean, for your life to be purified, my God, come on, so that you can stand up and say, I know the blood works. Not I'm telling you because I read it in the Word. Oh, I know that he can take alcohol from you. I know that he can turn your life around. I know that he can transform you. I know that he can deliver you because I'm the proof. First, you have to be the proof. What are you the proof of? Once you're the proof of something, now that is easily your ministry. That becomes your message. Eee. Proverbs 13 and 22 says, A good man. I know you think you got a good man, women of God. And another translation says good people. But a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Not only for his kids, but his chill, his grandchildren. Not only for her children, but for her grandchildren. How much do you have stored up? This is why you don't listen to how the enemy has tricked us into sin. We don't even have nothing to pass down. We having to do GoFundMe when people die. We don't have nothing to pass down. Come on. And I'm not even talking about money. Stop. We don't want to keep all we passing down is generational curse, generational curse, generational curse. I want to pass down generational blessings. I want to pass down generational legacy. Baby, my grandma loved God. That's all she listen. That's that. What is the legacy that is being passed down? If you all, and, and I want you to be able to pass down money, but if you only pass down money, but you don't pass down no godliness and you don't pass down no holiness, my God, come on. What is your reputation going to be when you're gone? I don't want to live a life where people have to lie about me at my funeral. No, she really was a woman of God. Come on. My kids be like, oh Lord, that, but they're going to be able to say, yeah, do that mama, mama lived that life she preached, boy, Lord have mercy. Yeah. Come on, what is your reputation going to say about you? When you are far gone, we're talking today about we have sacrificed our, exactly, pass on a standard. Come on, man. God. Listen, I was talking to a, a young man the other day, and he said, he said, my family doesn't like my girlfriend. He said, but we got an uncle in our family, and his, and his wife was not accepted by the family. He said, and you know what? He said, my uncle said, wherever she's accepted, I'm accepted. Wherever she's not accepted, I'm not accepted. And he, and he said, you know, he lived by that for many years. He said, and it taught me something. Because we're one, and this is who I have chosen. You don't got to lay with her. You don't got to pay her bills. But if she is not, he passed, he, he was telling me in that moment, my uncle passed down a lesson to me that is more valuable than money. He said, he, he, what he was saying is my, 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 my uncle passed down a, a standard for me, a way to live my life, a way to honor the woman who I have chosen. Come on. We teach people how to treat us. We teach, see, there has to be what standards, if you sitting up, go to a church. I say this, if you do not respect your pastor, please don't keep going to that church because you teach your children to talk about people. You don't sit there in the church, ask the pastor to pray for you, cast the devil out of your grandma, cast the devil out of your son, pray for your dog, come on, all of these things. And then you go home and talk about them behind their back. You are teaching your children to dishonor who God has honored. And you will be accountable for it. <sighs> My God. You know, and that's good. You said we want the next generation to do better than us. I remember my son at 17 years old laid in my arms and cried like a baby one day. He said, Mama, he said, Daddy wants me to be a man that he has never shown me how to be. Baby, as a mama, that crushed my heart because I'm, I'm limited. I'm limited. All I can give him is knowledge because I'm a woman. All I can give him is knowledge. And all I can say is God put men in his path that will stay the course, that will be faithful to the assignment. Just as I have. That's why I'm so faithful to those that God puts in my life. I'm faithful to my spiritual children because I want somebody to step in there and be faithful to mine. 
you will reap what you sow. This is what I'm trying to, when you're not doing your God assignment, you're not covering your children because sometimes what your child needs to hear, though you have said it time and time again, it's going to take another voice. And if you speak over someone else's child, I just believe that God will send somebody to speak over yours. I remember one night I was at a gas station. I was getting ready to go to something that I was invited to. I had just bought, I love long sweaters. I had just bought this brand new long sweater. It was so cute. And I'm standing there, I'm getting some gas. And this girl comes across the street and she was, she was cut up. You could tell she had been in a fight, young girl, and she was bleeding, and, and she was crying. I mean, tears were just all in her eyes, and I didn't even know the girl, and she didn't know me, and I just went with open arms. I said, oh, come here, come here, come here, come on, and I held her, and she let me hold her <laughs> for about 30 seconds, and then I think it hit her man like, I do not even know this lady, so she kind of pulled away. My God, but I just believe that one day. And then I shared my testimony because she was gay. I shared my testimony while I was dropping her off and where I was taking her. And I just believe that one day if Bishop Smith is somewhere and he gets himself in a situation that God will send somebody with open arms, you are going to reap what you sow. Every child that you let walk past you. In every situation that you know that you can speak into and you let you are reap, you are sowing seeds that you will reap later. Come on. And then because I know everything that's, a, that, that's attached to me got some glory on, I say, here, baby girl, have my sweater. Hey, glory, have my sweater. Because she didn't even have on enough clothes. I don't say that to brag on myself. I'm trying to help us to understand so that we will not continue to sacrifice our children. Hmm. Our children are looking for, from the streets, what they are supposed to find at home and what they are supposed to find in the house of God from the people of God. Their heart, our, every human heart wants to be loved. Every human heart wants to be understood. And as much as we don't think so, every human heart wants to be, uh, every human heart wants to be corrected. Because correction means you love me enough not to let me just fall off a cliff. If there is no correction, there is no love. If there is no correction, there is no love. There's a book, um, there's a book called Benjamin's Box. I don't know where you can find it, but it's called Benjamin's Box. It's an awesome children's book. I love that book. Uh, you can look for that one. And there are so many more, you know, and sometimes it's not even, see, sometimes it's not about trying to find something that's already created, but it takes you going in and studying and it takes you going in and creating the material. That's how you, that's that offering. I'm giving my time. It's easy to just read a book to them, but when you have to go in, sit down and think like a child, that's how, that's why I say we don't have time y'all to do other things because you got to sit and really get into your assignment. You have to really study to show yourself approved. God is so amazing. Our children are looking for in the streets, love, compassion, understanding, caring, correction, instruction, example. That's a big one, example. Our children are looking for example. They need an example. Why do you, is that true, woman of God? Look at our boys today. Everybody wants to wear their hair. Love you, baby. Everybody wants to wear their hair all over the top of their head and fluffed up and just standing up crazy and all our girls we got lace fronts on and these big humongous eyelashes that look like I'll fly away come on because we all want an example we all want an example everyone wants an example our children should not have their their role model should not be NBA NBA young boy. That should not be their role model and the baby and uh uh Miley Cyrus and uh that should not be their role model. But because the people of God that they may see, they they like, oh well the people of God's either broke or the ones that's rich, they're compromised. Amen. The ones that are rich, a lot of them are compromised. So they, they live one way, but they dress it so tight that if they if they got a shout, they're going to tear the back of it. Or they suit pants are so tight. Come on. we got to understand what God is showing us. <laughs> we have to understand. Children are looking for an example. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. 
God, I bless your name. And you know what? Um, oh, I don't know your name on here. I think you said your name is Sherry. I believe you said your name is Sherry. I'm trying to learn. I see I learned y'all by y'all's bubbles. But when you change your face bubble on her, then I sometimes I don't know you if I don't know you. But I'm trying to learn you. But we thank you for your, you know, your example. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. First Corinthians 4. First Corinthians 4. First Corinthians four. Okay. Verse 14. I am not writing these things to shame you, but to warn you as my beloved children. For even if you had 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. Where are the spiritual fathers? Where are the spiritual mothers? Because a teacher is only with your child six hours a day, eight hours a day, whatever the time. The, the, the teacher is on, but a father is one who is there before school. My God, after school. God, I bless your name. In the midnight hour, the one you can come and talk to, the one you can be honest with, the one who understands you, the one who has been growing with you, the one who has been instructing you. Where are the spiritual fathers? Where are the spiritual mothers? I am not writing these things to shame you, but to warn you as my beloved children. For even if you have 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. For I became your spiritual father in Christ Jesus when I preached the good news to you. So I urge you to imitate me. That is how we have, this is why the gangs are so are getting uh, so much influence in our children because they're coming alongside and they're fathering and they're mothering. Even in the gay community, they say, this is my children, this is my daughter, these are my, they call it, they're calling it, these are my children because they're saying, I raised them. Mm, glory, I raised them in this sin. My God, come on. I raised them in this culture. God, I bless your name. Come on. Where are the people of God? Come, why is the world outdoing people of God? The world don't hesitate. That's the crazy part. The people got, we so busy. We spend so much time trying to find our God assignment that there are souls dying daily. And seeing they don't need, honey, they just, they know what they good at. The weed man, he know what he's good at. He sell weed. Come on. The one who's teaching them how to, how to, how to load guns and how to make meth, they know what they're good at and they teach it because they don't need no help because it's already in them. That sin is already in them. That is why I have sent Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord. He said, I claim him. We got to claim. Who, who are your spiritual children? Are you, I mean, are you a mature, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, living example? My God. Uh, are you going, are you, is that already, you're, you're already there. It should be somebody listening to you. And they might not listen to a whole sermon, but you cook a little dinner. My God, you, you cook a little dinner. You sit over, you invite them over. They come over, they listen. They listen a little bit. You call them their little hair. You give them a ride to school. My God. Mm. God is faithful. Help us, Holy Ghost. Come on, I, want, I don't want our children to keep going to the world for love. I don't want them to keep going. And why are, is everybody so broke? We are supposed to be the lenders and not the borrowers. But first of all, the word of God says, I give seed to the sower. Many are not financially stable because you're not sowing into the kingdom of God. That's just first of all. But why we are, how are we supposed to be the head and not the tail? That's why we, we have, where are the kingdom businesses? Children have to go. They got to go to the world if they're trying to do something. Because where are the people of God in place that won't prostitute their gift? Because the world prostitutes the gift. The, the world sees, oh, they sing. They, they can come. They can spit rhymes off the top of their head. We want to take that. But they want to put it in the wrong kingdom, but they still cultivate it. But they make them sin over their soul. And before you know it, the very little, we had Miley Cyrus when she first started singing. She was just, you know, it was just pretty. Uh, Rihanna, when she first started singing, she was singing, umbrella, brother, brother, come on. And now she's on there. Just, it just goes worse and worse and worse. And so it is also in the gospel 
industry. They just keep saying Jesus, but the dresses get tighter. My God, they just keep saying Jesus, but the hair weaves get longer. They just keep saying Jesus, my God, but the men are saying it and they're doing all this. <sighs> Whew, my God, come on. We, we're, come on. What is really going on? We got into, We have to get into place, people of God. We got to get into position, people of God. Come on. I'm begging you. I am begging you. I am begging you with all my heart and all my mind and all my soul. I don't know what God, listen, I don't want to keep losing our children. You won't even have lust on your back like you do because you will be too busy engulfed in your God assignment. The whole three years I was celibate, I did not struggle with, with having a whole bunch of sexual desires because I was too busy from sun. I got up at 5 a.m. I, I had, I, at the time I was writing my, some of the time I was writing my daily devotional, but even when I wasn't, I got up, I studied my word for about an hour. I turned on my praise and worship music, made sure the children was, got them together, breakfast, or whatever needed to be done with that, got them to school, had to go to work, come on, ministering from behind the chair, God, I bless your name, come on, and then left there, went straight straight to work and uh, went straight to church and had some on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday night. Then I had my own ministry on Friday night. Then I got up early morning and Saturday, come on, and had to comb hair from sun up to sundown. Then I had to check with my own kids, have family time, come on, go to church on Sunday and then drive two hours to another church in the afternoon, then drive two hours back home, come on. Then come on, you don't have time for sin. That's what I want us to know. When you are truly engulfed in your God assignment, you don't have time. Many can't come out of sin because you're not occupying your time. But let me say this. And then the people of God, sometimes the church is not giving you the opportunity to because they feel like you ain't ready. I mean, you're not ready. you not, you know, you ain't been through the 17 weeks of ministerial classes and you don't have no, uh, baby, I'm the proof. The crack can, you can be delivered from crack because the Lord did it for me. What class can you teach me that in? <laughs> I've already went through the school of the Holy Ghost. Whew. Let's go to um, 1 Corinthians 3 and 10. 1 Corinthians 3 and 10. Children have to have a proper foundation. They have to have a proper foundation. See, this is something that I learned. Even you have to get people in and let them start working. You got to get them in and, and let them start working and correct as they go. The Lord told Peter, he was like, Peter, come on, drop your nets. I'm going to make you fishers of men. He began to walk with them. Come on. When Peter walked on water, he fell. The Lord kept, helped him. Come on. Then he said, the Lord said, who do men say I am? Peter said, you are the son of God. Come on. The Lord said, yes, Peter, that is right. I'm paraphrasing. And then we get to the place where Peter, they came for Jesus and Peter cut off the man's ear and the Lord was like, Satan, get thee behind me. So he was saying, no, Peter, that ain't of God. Uh, that ain't of God. So let's come on. We're not doing that. Let's keep doing what we're supposed to be doing. Come on. Get back to then when Peter denied him. Come on. Then he still said once it was all said and done. Come on, Peter. I still love you. Come on. That is how ministry looks to walk through a season. What Walk through life with people. Stop dropping people because they make a mistake. I mean, if God really called you to him, it's the once I always tell people, once God puts you in my heart, I mean, unless you say, I don't want you in my life, woman of God, then I just won't be in your life. But if God puts me in, if, if God puts you in my heart, you're in my heart on your good days. You Now, I will give you space to be great. If you want to do a whole lot, because I got some spiritual children and they are just hard headed and I've been like, Lord God, I love you and just get your child. My God, come on. But I give them their space, but they know how to call when they're ready. We have to stop dropping people in the middle of the assignment because life gets hard. Man, we have to give children a proper foundation. First Corinthians 3 and 10, because the God of great, because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. This is so important to create a foundation in your home. It's, it starts out as routine. Every, we don't leave this house without this, 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 and this. Sundays are for church or Saturdays or Fridays or whatever your day is at your family. Come on. The word of God has to be first in our house. Blah, blah, blah. We don't do this in our house. We have a list of thou shall nots in our house and under no circumstances. Come on. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Calvin, um, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, you are a man of great influence. You are a man of great influence and you are a man of great wisdom and you have patience. Not because you want to have patience, but because life has created a well of patience in you. You have a fatherly anointing. And there are children that are waiting to be fathered. And though you may not understand where to start and you may not even feel worthy or whatever the struggle, because I feel a little tug in there, whatever that tug is, you know, don't worry about the tug. God has peace created a well in you of love. Hmm. Thank you, God. I see like like maybe a, a park or a youth group and I just see you step into place and I see all the kids just run and hug you around your waist. Just, oh, Mr. Calvin. I just, children want to be loved. They want to be protected. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. And you fear God. Let me say that part. You fear God. That's That's been a piece of your hesitancy. You fear God. And so because you fear God, you're going to handle the children. Some people, I heard somebody say, one man said, he said, I don't want to get married because I don't want to mess up my, my wife. And I said, no, because you, because you understand that very principle, you're going to be a good husband. He said, but my daddy wasn't a good husband and my grandpa wasn't a good husband. But you are going to be because you are cautious and you fear God. Don't deny the woman her. Don't deny whoever your wife is the privilege of being your wife because you are afraid of the things that have come before you. God has called you to live in a different way. First Corinthians. 3 and 10, because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it. That's the beautiful part. You get to stand in the gap and you get to build a foundation for other people to come and they be, okay, you know, when people say, I've heard someone say, oh, that person is church ready. That means they, someone has laid a foundation in them. They know how to come in and serve because someone has laid a foundation in them. Come on. Now others are building on it, but whomever is building on this foundation <laughs> must be very careful for no one can lay any foundation other than the one we have already, the one we already have, and that is Christ Jesus. The foundation has to be the Lord. We put him first. I had some several ministries reach out to me. We want, do you want to, you want to come inside of our covenant, our fellowship, whatever they was calling it. And so I got on the call. I'm listening to them. And they kept saying, you know, if we have a, if you have any problem, we coming. Then somebody else got on the phone. They said, well, if you have a problem, we coming and we'll come, we'll drop everything. We don't play about our members. Why the whole time y'all kept saying y'all coming, baby, don't come for me. Send Christ. Can you pray? Can you fast? Because all I'm hearing is that you're going to put your human hands on it. And baby, you just as limited as I am limited. There is no other foundation besides Jesus Christ and him crucified. You have to listen for the foundation that they are building. What are you trying to offer me? What are you offering of me? You want to be a part of this church? What is y'all's foundation? I know you're saying Jesus, my God, but you have made it about you. The word does say honor your leaders and that's a blessing. But, but through Christ, all things are possible. Only through Christ do I share this wisdom. It is not of my own. Come, okay. <laughs> I love y'all on TikTok. Right? It sounds like a spiritual gang. <laughs> exactly. If we gonna gang up, we gonna gang up in prayer, okay? <laughs> yes, God. Come on. We got a couple more scriptures because I want us to understand our children are being sacrificed because we're not in proper position. Let's go to 1 Peter. We got two more scriptures. Let's go to 1 Peter. Hallelujah. God, I bless your name. These little books in the back. Woo! God, I bless your name. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. 
We have to have examples, people of God. Our children, this is why our children are struggling because their examples are off. If you just sitting up in your prayer closet all day, hallelujah, ha and listen, I love God. Y'all better, y'all know I love God. I love worship and all those things, but if I only sit in my prayer closet and worship the Lord in my prayer closet and I'm not doing any works in the earth, I'm not teaching them any example. Here in 1 Peter 3 and 1 says, In the same way you wives must accept the authority of your husbands, even then even if some refuse to obey the good news, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over by observing your pure and reverent lives. Now, I'm going to just drop this little nugget right here, y'all. It's, it's tight, but it's right. Come on. The word of God says, wives, win your husband without a word. That's what this verse says in the King James Version. Win him without a word, okay? But then the Bible says, husbands, wash your wife uh, with the word, with words, okay? With the word, with your words. Your words have to wash her, cleanse her, shape her. My God, they have to clean her, not stain her. My God, so it's funny because most households are lopsided. We got the wives running it and the, and the husbands are silent, when the word of God is teaching us the direct opposite. <laughs> okay, but let's just keep reading. Verse 3. Don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothing. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within. The unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. Where the culture teaches us, make sure this is on fleek. The Lord said, make sure this is on fleek. Hey, my God, come on. Culture teaches us, make sure your outer, that's why these, these young girls are spending so much money on these uh, surgeries and, and, and on all of these things. We're reshaping, we're being shapeshifters. God, I bless your name. Come on. Because culture, that, where are the godly women? Let's keep reading. This is how the holy women of old made themselves beautiful. They put their trust in God and accepted the authority of their husbands. For instance, Sarah obeyed her husband, Abraham, and called him her master. Another translation says, called him Lord. Come on. We're in 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3, we started at verse 1. Come on. You are her daughters when you do what is right without fear of what your husband might do. Y'all know I preach this all the time, women of God. Come on. This is a real situation. When you do what is right, God handles your husband. I, I don't have to look. I don't even, I don't look at my husband's phone. I don't have time to be checking all his things. I don't have time to be checking and all of that stuff, baby. Because one thing I have understood. Okay, if they take it out of their phone, but it's still in their heart. How good was that? <laughs> my God. If they take it out of their phone, but it's still in their heart. Stop going through your husband's phone. My God, come on. You're wasting your time. Let God handle. When you do it God's way, when you say, God, I'll leave it in your hands. All things will be revealed. You'll stumble, you'll be doing laundry and something fall out. You ain't trying, you don't have to try to figure out. Hey, glory, you just do your be so in go. This is why many wives and husbands are miserable because you're so focused on what the other person is doing and you ain't even doing your God assignment because your mind can't focus on two things. Hey, your mind can't focus on two things. Hey, help us, Holy Ghost. You are her daughters when you do what is right without fear of what your husband might do. Okay, now let me talk to the men. Verse 7, in the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Give honor to your wives. Listen, you should not have, she should not have to step up and say, that's my man, because there should already be a standard that is set. No, there should not, when, when a woman is able to approach you with all that key, 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 and all that putting that, no, mm -mm. because that means this has been happening. If when a woman is bold enough to do it nine times out of ten, every now and then we got a crazy one, but nine times out of ten, when a woman steps into a man's presence in front of his wife and she's too flirty, it's because he's been letting her do it. Mm. No, ma'am, I'm married. Some men have a big personality and you're going to have to pull it back. 
You, you can't make every woman laugh. My God, it's not, a, it's, it's not your job to comfort every woman. It's not your job to make every woman happy. It's not your job, my God, to make every woman smile. It's not your job. <laughs> Come on, I want us to understand what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Honor your wife. You will give an account. Love her like you want somebody to love your daughter. Come on. Love her like you want somebody to love your wife, your, your uh, mama. Come on. We have to be honorable in their presence and out of their presence. Your husband, you know you, out, you know you don't need to be out wearing that kind of dress and your husband's at work. That's a date night dress. Your husband ain't with you and it's too much. Come on. We have to honor our covenants. In the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding. As you live together. Treat your wife with... That means you got to give her your time and you have to shut out the rest of the world. Treat her with understanding. Help try to understand how she feels. Stop being so prideful. That's why me and I... That's why a lot of women cheat. It's not about the sex. A lot of times they're just wanting someone to listen and understand their point of view. And so are children. And it just happened to come with it. But it started because you're too busy with your mind in a football game. You're too busy with your mind in a baseball game. You're too busy with your mind on Madden 2K, blah, 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 blah. You're too busy at work 24 hours a day. Come on. Treat your wife with understanding. Listen to what she's saying saying and i got another one for you listen to what she's not saying this takes your full attention this is why a man that's cheating will you'll always miss her silent cues you always miss her silent cues my husband had me hollering last night we hollered all night he had me tickled boy he was he was making fun of me he said baby i know you do this one thing and it just had because i do do it and i didn't think about it he said when you do this that's when i know blah 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 and i'll be like oh that is just too cute listen to what she's saying but also listen to what she is not saying she may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. See, I, that's the part we don't want. Because mm. we always want to be like the man is the, yes, the man is the head, but the word of the Lord says she's also your equal partner in new life, in, in new life. He who is in Christ is a new creation. When you're no longer, your old life is you were single and she was single. But now, come on, now the word of the Lord says that she is your partner. In new life, it's a gift from God. Treat her as you should so that your prayers will not be hindered. Did you know? This is why I listen. Honey, I love the, I use the word of God all day, every day in my life. Come on. Listen, I don't got to argue. I don't have to persuade. You ain't got to go hear there in sideways if they don't do right. Women of God, I'm talking to you. If the husband don't do right, their prayer life is going to be hindered. They can keep asking God. He, God's like, what you think? I'm about to, let, you over here mishandling my daughter and you think I'm going to bless you? You got me messed up. They business will be done fell apart. They car, everything will start going wrong in their life. Because God has given you, when he gives you one of his daughters, he is giving you his best. All right, we got one more scripture. Let's go to Titus this morning. Titus chapter two. God, I bless your name. Titus chapter two, verse one. As you, as for you, Titus, promote the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching. Promote influence. The kind of teaching that promote, promotes, um, that reflects wholesome teaching. Teach the older men to exercise self-control. To be worthy of respect and to live wisely. Where are the people that are teaching? Yes. Where are the people uh where are the people who are teaching men to live wisely? 
to live wisely, to have self-control. No, culture teaches the men do not have self-control. Sleep with everything moving. Let your eyes get caught in a crack of their behind. Let your eyes get caught in their breast. Let your eyes, come on. Culture teaches you do whatever you want. You can have a side chick, a main chick. You can have two baby mamas. Come on. Culture teaches you not to have self-control. But the word of God says, teach older men to exercise. You have to actually practice this thing. And don't worry, loose women give you plenty of opportunity to practice, my God, to exercise. God, I bless your name. Come on, self-control. We're in Titus. Titus chapter 2, we started at verse 1. We're in verse 2 now. Teach older men to exercise self-control, to be worthy of respect. People don't respect you when you got 16 baby mamas. I mean, it is what it is. We still love you. And once you save, sanctified, and holy, those feel it becomes a part of your testimony. But it's not respect worthy. And then we're struggling because now your wife is frustrated. She loves you and she want to marry you. But your child support check is more money going out of the house than in the house. See, culture don't teach us about that part. If if culture taught, help these people understand that, yeah, you can have the sex. And I know shawty bad. I know she cute. I know all these things are looking good. Come on. But when you get her pregnant, you're going to have to keep paying child support all your life. And it's going to take out of the house that you are, that you're trying to build with somebody else. And it's not only going to do that, but it's going to break the children's hearts. Because you can't tuck all of them in bed. You're one person. And now your heart is torn between households. Your heart is torn between which child gets my affection, which child can I, you, your heart is now torn. Oh God. They must be filled. They must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. Similarly, teach the older women to live in a way that honors God. That means there is a way. Our culture is teaching us to live in a way that is opposite. All the, how has grandmothers got their breasts out on everything and skin-tight body con dresses and cat suits and long wigs and these long, sharp fingernails and, and just every, what, what kind of grandmas is what is going on? Teach the older women to live in a way that honors God. They must not be slanderers. That means gossipers. Turn people's names down or be heavy drinkers and that's all we see on these reality shows that's all they're doing they don't i always think as we're y'all don't do nothing without drinking everything gotta have drink. breakfast gotta have drinking lunch gotta have drinking dinner gotta have drinking party gotta have drinking evening hours gotta have drinking business occasions everything got to have drinking it's teaching the opposite hmm. it's teaching the opposite. Instead, they should teach others what is good. These older men must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children to live wisely and to be pure and to work in their homes and to do good and to be submissive to their husbands. These things have to be taught. That's what we're, we're having to understand today. These things have to be taught, but where are the older women who are supposed to be teaching the younger women? Where are they? Where are the older women? We got the, it's opposite. Our culture has been flip-flopped. Um, we're in 2 Titus. So I started at verse 1 and now we're on verse 5. So everything I've read was in with, within that. Where are the older women teaching the younger women? We too busy got the older, we too busy got the, the younger women teaching the grandmas how to do the new dances and how to do all of that. Come on. God, I bless your name. They will not bring shame on the word of God. In the same way, encourage young men to live wisely. This is why you have to talk. I hear a lot of men that I talk up to. They always say, I'm not talking to these young kids because they're not listening. It's somebody listening. It's somebody listening somewhere. Somebody somewhere is listening for your voice. And you must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teaching. Come on. Teach the truth so your teaching can't be criticized. 
then those who oppose us will be ashamed and have nothing bad to say. Live in a way that backs up your words, okay? Live in a way that backs up your words, all right? That's it. Okay, someone is listening just by your character. So true. That is so true. Lord, we thank you for your word on today, oh great God. We come with repented hearts today. Repented mindsets today. Repented heart postures today, God, for we have been a part of the sacrificing our children. And God, we ask that you help us to get back on track. Show us the way. Lead us and guide us to those you have called us to in this season. So that we can create a foundation, not by power, not by might, but only by your spirit. Be with the men of God that you have called to lead other young men. Be with the women of God that you have called to lead other young women. Be with the people of God that you have stepped, that you have called to lead a community and gr a group of people to your way. Oh God, for your word says that broad is the way to destruction, but narrow is the way to the kingdom of God and very few ever find it. The word of God says, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can one preach unless they are sent? May we be sent on today, God. Your word says, without holiness, without holiness, no man can see God. May we live holy. May we live righteous. May we live, uh, uh, may we live submitted. May our conscience be more sensitive to your moving. For Paul said, I want to go to bed with a clear conscience. Those things that don't make our conscience clear, God, allow it to keep irritating us until we come to you and listen to you about that thing. Many are frustrated about the words that God is speaking. But we don't understand it's trying, he's trying to save your life and those that are attached to you. Lord, we thank you. We love you. You are amazing and wonderful. We thank you that it is your loving kindness that has drawn us to repentance. And may we teach others the same way, God. For your word says, love like we have been loved. For you have showed us how love works because you first loved us. Love your neighbor. Love your wife, love your husband, love your children. God, I bless your name. Love your enemy. For love is the language of God. Lord, we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Whew. Hallelujah. Listen, I love the Lord. He's good to us, y'all. I love the Lord. He is good to us. Our word today was called sacrificing the children. Hmm. Hallelujah. I want to give you an opportunity to sow into the word on today. My cash app is dollar sign make over ministry. Dollar sign make over ministry. To the partners who have already sold this week and you've already sown your um, $20 seed. May the Lord continue to bless you. May he continue to increase you. Now, if you're saying, I want to partner with the Makeover Ministry, I want to be a part of the Makeover Ministry, I want to sow my seed of $20 every week, I want to come and grow with you all, make sure that when you sow your seed, um, at least that first time that you put your email address so that I can reach out to you so that we can have communication. Um, and then after that, I want you, as you sow, Something that, that the Lord put in my heart to do, and I have seen it come to pass. Once you've already put your email address, um, the next time when you begin to sow, I want you to put the word seed, and then I want you to put what you're sowing, because every seed needs a name. We don't just go to the farmer's market and just pick up out of a bucket. We don't know if we got apple seeds or orange seeds or banana seeds. We don't know what we got. Come on. And so for myself, one thing I've always asked of God when I put my seed in the ground, I always ask God, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Sometimes I'll ask for two or three things, but I always ask God, give me wisdom. I've always asked the Lord, when I put a seed in the ground, give me wisdom. I want to sprout wisdom because the Lord told Solomon, when you ask for wisdom, he said, I gave you everything else because you didn't ask for fame and you didn't ask for money. I'm going to give you those things because you desire the most precious gift. Yay. Hallelujah. If you have not picked up your copy of 
um, Dolls, uh, my book is on Amazon. It's called Dolls 90 Day Devotional. It's not just for women. I'm the doll, um, daughter of the living, loving Savior. Make sure you go ahead and pick that up. It is $35. And not only are you purchasing a book, but you're sewing into the ministry. I do do one-on-one -on -one life coaching. And I'm excited that our tour, our Women's Still Standing Tour, will be in the first stop will be in Grenada, Mississippi, December 17th, 18th, and 19th. Um, and so I'm excited about that. Make sure you join us. We will be at Zach's Mobile Detail Shop. And so we want you to uh, come out. So Friday night and Saturday night are just for the women. And then Sunday, um, we want you to bring the whole family out. So we want to we wanna see everybody. We want the kids. Come on. Let me see my makeover babies that be saying good morning in the morning time. Bring the family out if possible. And so I'm excited. All right, people of God, if you want to pick up your t-shirt for the uh, women's tour, please make sure that you go ahead. Amen. Uh, make sure if you want to pick up your t-shirt for the still standing women's tour, make sure you go ahead to uh, Pretty Praisers, Pretty Praisers Uh You can pick up your shirt there. So, all right, people of God, be encouraged. Have a great day on purpose. Know that if God be for you, he is greater than the world against you. Blessings and peace. Be encouraged. I'm Apostle Julia of the Makeover Ministry, and I'll see you all tomorrow, Lord willing.